Hey, what's going on everybody? My name is Aaron Hilliard. Welcome to Mushroom Wonderland. I'm out here with my two dogs, Gunner and Loki. We're gonna go out and discover what kind of wild mushrooms are growing in late November in Washington State. I'm the vice president of the local mycological society in Kitsap County, Washington, and I've been studying mushrooms my entire life. So today I wanna to take you out into the forest and discover what's growing out here. Some edible mushrooms, even some hallucinogenic mushrooms growing with some deadly mushrooms. This is a really important and awesome episode. So come with me on a journey into Mushroom Wonderland. Mushroom Wonderland. Check this out right here, the candle snuff fungus or Xylaria. Look at all of them spores. Those are always kind of fun to do that too. It's been a big year for these. Always growing on dead wood like this. Xylaria hypoxylon. You could just call this uh, inedible or unknown. Right over here I see some cool little mushrooms, some, some LBMs, some little brown mushrooms. See that little fuzzy looking caps? Ooh, fiber caps. So these are gonna have a medium brown spore print. These are in the genus Inosibi, really commonly growing on the side of the trails right now. And these can contain muscarin and be quite toxic. So Inos would be generally a good genre of mushrooms to stay away from. But they're loving this cooler weather. So the Inos bees are growing everywhere trail side right now. And uh, you could tell all those little fibers on the cap. Make it a fiber cap. That's the common name for the genus Inos bee. Cool. Let's get... Loki's loving life out here, dude. He loves it in the woods. <laughs> he's a good kid. He's getting truffle trained, so by the end of this winter, he should be out in the woods finding truffles. He's getting really good at it. Make sure to check my Instagram, mushroom.wonderland, on Instagram, and you can see some videos of him um, starting to really identify where the truffle tins are as we hide them around the house and stuff. My wife's taken pretty extensive training for it, so pretty cool stuff. Right here, a bunch more of these like kind of caramely brown type mushrooms growing here. These ones have a really cool texture on the stipe. And these could look like psilocybe azurescence, maybe. I don't know. Look at over there. They could they could look like a psilocybe mushroom because they're caramel on top. But these ones are probably toxic. These are hyphaloma dispersum, or the dispersed hyphaloma. And they're a handsome little mushroom. They often kind of grow individually, but here you're seeing quite a few of them growing together. They're really liking the substrate and the weather we're having. There's a big flush of them right down there. But hyphaloma dispersum related to the to the sulfur tufts and probably toxic. So best to leave those alone, but they're beautiful and caramely colored like a lot of the magic mushrooms are. I'm not doing like a oh look at that. I'm not doing a, a comparison to psychedelic mushrooms. These ones just kind of look like it. This one, Russell of Brevipes, really common. It can get parasitized and turn into a lobster mushroom. It's got this vase-shaped cap. All the gills kind of stop in a certain spot, but you know, they're kind of lightly attached to the stem. Really brittle mushroom and Russula, a uh, genus of mushrooms that are safe to eat generally, especially the Russula brevipede is totally safe to eat. Loki, you're poking yourself. All right, there you go. Anyways, this one's edible, but when it gets parasitized with the Hypomyces lactiflorum, that contorts it and turns it into a lobster mushroom, it becomes much more delectable, but it's related to the shrimp russula. This one russula zerampolina or the short-footed russula. And it too will shatter when you throw it at a tree. <laughs> what do you think, Loke? 
Anyways, yeah. There's a lot of those out right now. The sun sits low in the sky this time of year in the northwest. We have pretty short days. By like 4.30 now it's dark. So if you live in the southern states... Yeah, that's what happens up here in the more northern latitudes of the United States. As we have short days, it gets light at like 8 o'clock in the morning and it's dark at 4.30 in the afternoon. So it starts getting cold and the mushrooms just kind of go back into dormancy. A lot of them do when it starts to get really cold and probably won't be long before we might start seeing snowflakes in the forecast. So I came into a little clearing with a bunch of different little brown mushrooms growing around. So right here is the Hyphaloma dispersum. These ones we already looked at and talked about. And they're going to have a kind of a greenish colored gill with a purple brown spore print. But I see some others growing right over here that are a darker brown color. So let me pick one of these and have a look at it. Yep. As I suspected. You see that? See that little ring on the stem? Kind of orange brown colored gills this guy is known as gallerina marginata this is the the uh, funeral bell or the skull cap this is a deadly mushroom one of our deadly mushrooms that we have here in the pacific northwest and uh it's a beautiful mushroom but really deadly so there's those growing right here among the hyphaloma dispersum so a couple of lbms probably both toxic this one deadly deadly toxic but as i look right behind it i see this huge fruiting of all these little mushrooms these really little brown mushrooms and these my friend are the woodland silly or the silly pelly or the psilocybe pelliculosa so growing right alongside of your hyphaloma dispersum and your gallerina marginata this one Psilocybe pelliculosa. It's going to have purple brown spores. When they get mature, they bruise blue a little bit. But one of the most indicative things about these mushrooms is when you break the cap, it has this gelatinous pellicle. Dang it. Let me see if I can slowly tear this apart. It'll have this clear viscid layer. See that? Wow. That's the pellicle. So, Psilocybe pelliculosa, noted for its gelatinous pellicle. A little bit of blue bruising will often happen here on the bottom of the stem. And uh, it's mildly hallucinogenic, but you get enough of these together and, you know, you're, uh, you're off in outer space. But then, again, right here next to it, Gallerina marginata, deadly Gallerina. So deadly Gallerina, Hyphaloma dispersum, Psilocybe pelliculosa, all growing right next to each other, wild. These are these are stout little mushrooms and they're tough. This one you can kind of see a little bluing on the edge of the cap. Once you have an eye for psilocybe, you just they're very obvious. But a lot of nice little specimens here. They don't usually get much bigger than that, and uh, they're reportedly mild. I've never tried them or anything, but uh, you know there's quite a few here, and there's a lot more here and there everywhere they're all over but do not pick the wrong pins right these are gallerina pins psilocybe pins anyways surprising to see those flushing again this late in the season but there you go if you're out on the hunt for those there's quite a quite an array of them nice another nice grouping of psilocybe pelliculosa here there's a lot of them, so pretty nice. Oh, look right down here. We got one of them big russulas, a big purple one. Russula zarampolina, the shrimp mushroom, or the shrimp russula. This one's a little past its prime, but you know, you gotta be careful if you're gonna eat old mushrooms. A lot of people think they got poisoned, but it's just a rotten mushroom. You can get food poisoning, you know. So, mushroom looking that old, I'd probably leave it alone. But this one, Russula zarampolina, is the shrimp Russula. It's a pretty decent edible mushroom when they're younger. 
and they're really cool when you throw them at a tree and they shatter. It's always fun. <laughs> He's living his best life out here. Go ahead and take that down. Nah, I'll leave it. Dang it. They cut all my favorite woods all the time, man. We live in a beautiful area here in the Pacific Northwest, but that's part of the game is that the loggers come and they wipe out your favorite patch all the time. It's chilly out here today. You feel that winter in the air, but I love winter. I like the cold months, so. But it means less mushrooms, that's for sure. So Loki came across a pretty cool mushroom right here. We have some sterium hirsutum growing here on this log and then parasitizing it is your witch's butter or tremula mesenterica. This one uh, is edible. You could just eat it right off the log, this orange stuff, orange jelly. And see these like uh, turkey tail looking things, these little shell fungus. Yeah, the false turkey tail or sterium hirsutum and it plays host to this parasite witch's butter so witches would put that on their toast or you could too it's not that bad but it just really doesn't have too much flavor but here's a good example of that parasitism happening and then right here is a big flush of these super common lacaria lacata so these guys you see them growing everywhere right now big roughly upturned caps widely spaced kind of pinkish gills really scurfy furry woody type stems and they just grow everywhere. Mycorrhizal, these grow with the trees and, uh, you know, really common. And they are edible, but they're just not that good tasting. I was disappointed last week when I tried them out and found that they were lacking, definitely. And almost kind of gross. So, there you go. Lacaria lacata. Pretty common. Commonly known as the deceivers. Look at that. It replanted itself. That was awesome. Ooh. Look at that cool guy growing right in the middle of this really crude kind of game trail out here. There's a few of them here. Look at that big rugged partial veil hiding the gills under there until those spores get mature. This one's Strophaeria ambigua, the ambiguous Strophaeria. Here's a bigger one. These guys are related to wine caps. They could look like Psilocybe cubensis actually when they get older, kind of like this one. Look at that. We, I can assure you we don't have Psilocybe cubensis growing in Washington State. But man, that kind of does look like it, right? Psilocybe actually used to be in Strophaeria. Uh, the cubensis did. Strophaeus, Strophaeria cubensis. But yeah, this one is not hallucinogenic. It is edible. Um, it is thought to be edible. Not hallucinogenic. Growing out here in late November in the Pacific Northwest and it's 42 degrees. No. It's not what it is. So there you go, Strophaeria ambigua. They're all over. Walked into a nice little patch of them, so. Really common. More lacarias. And you can see there's a lot of slash here. This is where some loggers went through and like thinned this area out. This is actually a county park, so. Uh, it killed a lot of good like chanterelle and hedgehog habitat that was out here, but. There's a lot of other mushrooms, a lot of these saprobic mushrooms that are growing here on the slash. And someday this forest is going to be beautiful again. Right now it's just kind of pillaged. But it is what it is. So there's still cool mushrooms out here. They just change, you know. More Lacaria just growing on the side of the trail. I think there's like 14 different species of them here. So some of them are more orange, some of them are less orange. Some of them are like two-toned, some of them are purple. A lot of different Lacarias. I've heard that the really purple ones, the Lacaria amethysto occidentalis can absorb a lot of arsenic out of the soil and other heavy metals. So probably a good idea to avoid that one for eating, but it's a beautiful photography mushroom. Definitely getting cold out here. There's frost and 
those pelliculosa are just like super prime so i wouldn't worry too much about frost if i was you as far as like your patches going bad or something look here's a conifer log and it's got some orange jelly fungus on it too but it's different than that stuff that was uh parasitizing the sterium back there this one dacromyces chrysospermus grows on old conifer logs here in the northwest also edible just like a little orange booger if that's what you want to eat you can go right ahead right over here something white catches my eye and matsutake can sometimes grow on the side of the trail and and they can be white and poking out of the needle duff like this but this one is the white woodland amanita that we have around here amanita silvicola so this one toxic and it can have a ring on it just like that you see tricholoma or your matsutake is going to have really like tan modeling coloring on the bottom of the stem down there it's going to also have a little more brown on the cap but especially um, matsutake is much tougher and so when you cut it, it'll actually squeak. And when you squeeze the stem, it won't budge. But this, I can smush it with my fingers like that. It's also growing out of like kind of a bulb down in there. I didn't get the entire base, which I probably should have to show you. But here's a young one next to it. And uh, these ones are poisonous. So you don't want to mix the two up. And it's okay to handle mushrooms. But just don't eat these. Um, and know the difference between matsutake and amanitas. So that's kind of your responsibility. I'm just here to show you uh, a general idea. It's up to you to really do the work to identify your mushrooms. I hope nobody solely bases their mushroom identifications just based on my like shaky cell phone videos. You know what I mean? That could be a little dangerous. Some mushrooms are so obvious that there's no way you're gonna like mistake that orange jelly for something else. But when it comes to Amanita versus Tricholoma or the Gallerina versus Philosophy, um, definitely do your own research, go through all the keys, make sure you know what you got before you think about eating it. All right, so we're just about back to the truck, but I just want to say thanks for joining me on this episode. That was really fun, just super minimal. Hopefully you got some value out of that. Really important information about the sillies and the deadlies, you know what I mean? So um, make sure to hit subscribe. Go to mushroom-wonderland.com for some merchandise. Join me on Patreon for five bucks. Help support your boy so I can feed these guys. And we'll see you on the next episode. Much love, everybody. Peace.